The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, very good morning to you all uh, and welcome to the AFI Group webinar. Uh, today, I'm going to focus on uh, what's probably considered in the IPAF world as a long-anticipated uh, worldwide um, public mute safety report. Um, just to introduce myself, my name is Brian Parker. I'm the Business Development Manager uh, for the a AFI Group of Companies. Um, running time approximately for this webinar is between 45 and 50 minutes. Um, there will be a short Q&A session at the end, um, and if you know, I'll do my best to sort of you know answer any questions during during that time. But if you do have any questions which I can't answer, um, I will answer them uh, after the webinar. So that hopefully you can you can answer and, and get your uh, get your questions answered appropriately. Okay, um, just to kind of give you a bit of a background, um, just wait for the slide to come on. So there's there's my there's myself. Um, I've basically been involved with uh, Mutes now for well over 23 years. Worked in around construction plant, and you can see I'm on various sort of IPAF, PASMA, HAE, facet um, working groups, as well as uh, recently been um, put into the BSI uh, committee, which um, which uh, which basically looks at the standards um, for for Mutes. Um, um, as you can see there, I'm also well involved with the Strategic Forum Plant Safety Group um, and for my sins, I'm very proud of the fact that I'm also uh, an, uh, an ex-Royal ex Engineers and been, a, um, you know, been, a, been an instructor for, for, for MUTES for some time. So just quickly going through the agenda, it's worth noting, and I have to tell you all this, that this is a global report. Um, it's a worldwide global, global report. And it has taken some 18 months uh, to arrive really at where we are today. Uh, and to give you some sort of proportionality really to this report, it's worth noting the estimated size of the rental units um, which are available worldwide. And I say rental units and I say estimated. Now in the UK, uh, we have approximately 70,000 units of all types. Um, and we know that there are approximately about 5,000 low level units. Germany has around 62,000 mutes, but they are far less lower, uh, low level uh, units. The Netherlands has a region of 23,000 units, which given the proportion is, uh, of, of population is quite high. Um, and then we have the United States. Um, it's a harder one to judge, um, but you know, talking to industry experts, it's estimated that there are around 630,000 units, possibly even more. Um, and that market, that market over there is far more fragmented than perhaps many people realize. Worldwide, um, so it's estimated that approximately 1.3 million units, um, maybe even a little higher, as China is a growing market and, and, you know, as such, we don't see much of it. Um, so it just gives you some sort of idea there. 1.3 million, you know, 630,000 in the States, 70,000 in the UK approximately. Um, so it gives, it gives you a bit of an idea. So today's webinar is really to focus on the findings of the IPAF Worldwide MUPE Safety Report. Um, and what we will be doing is focusing um, from uh, 2016, 2017 and 2018. And we'll highlight the fatal and lost time incidents which have been reported. Um, also, we'll also look at the three year figures along with the annual average in relation to sector, location and activity at the time. Um, I will cover how you can report incidents uh, and conclude with some of the recommendations which have been also been made in the report. Now, my view is you need to be uh, made aware of the main incidents and accidents which have happened so you can prepare them in your respective businesses. Please remind yourself as you're going through, uh, as, as I'm going through the webinar, that some of these which I've highlighted could, aff could affect your own operators, but also be mindful that when machines are you know, delivered by rental companies, the driver could have an incident on your own site. So just be you know, mindful of these things. Um, and also remember, you know, this report, you know, technically, well, not technically it isn't out yet. Um, it's imminent as we speak. It has been slightly delayed uh, due, to, due to situations. But, you know, this is my, you know, sort of looking at this industry and looking where the issues are. And those of you um, who have been on this, um, on the webinar before, will say that, um, you know, that, um, you know, that I do sort of, talk about things you know quite openly i've got just one somebody just asked a question um somebody's saying is there meant to be sound on this um, my sound is working fine um according to this so um hopefully you're all you're all able to hear this okay 
Um, I haven't got any issues at all on my end, um, so hopefully that's okay. Okay, so I'm um, just going to um, give you a little bit of a, 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 an, in, an insight into it. Um, prior to 2012, the MUP industry itself really had an unknown level of accidents and incidents. And these normally um, came to light following safety alerts, incidents, which had often been highlighted, main contractors, the media, um, and, and in fact, some powered access rental units. If I'm going to be critical, the downside to this was that some incidents were reported multiple times due to rebranding of incidents and safety alerts. And this caused both confusion and concern um, for the industry and also mute manufacturers. No, nothing worse than having two incidents that looks like you, your brand's got problem or your machine's got problem. When in fact, it was a, you know, somebody who's rebranded their own, you know, another person's incident. Now, being a long term member of the UK uh, Country Council for IPAF, I can confirm um, that the IPAF members wanted to improve safety, not only in their own uh, businesses, but also for their own clients and supply chain. So the UK Country Council made it mandatory to report accidents and incidents which are mute related. Um, now, even though this project commenced back in 2012, it's worth pointing out, even without this report, that the manned reporting of incidents for MIPAF members has been very useful so far because it's improved training programs, guidance, you know, and, and we know a lot more. So what the IPAF Country Council then did to try and drill down into some of these incidents was formed an accident working group. Now, I've sat on this small working group now for many years and happy to say at the stage we're now hopefully that, you know, these reports should be re you know, released annually. Um, I will do a little bit of a, a pitch again a little, bit, a little bit later, but if you wish to participate in, you know, as a business in providing your incidents and accidents, then, you know, register your interest uh, on the IPAF.org website, report your incidents and you will make a difference. I will stress that any info about your company, your business, or any individual is, is automatically redacted uh, prior to use. Um, so we, as a, as, a, as a working group, do not see any of your any of your data. Um, so essentially, you know, have complete confidence in the anonymity of your report. And here you can see kind of like a, an extract as to what we, as a working group, would see. So the day, the category of person you know, what the actual outcome was, how that person was, was unfortunately or injured or, you know, an uh, issue, um, where it was, um, what part of the body, a short um, sort of free text ability currently as we've got um, of, of what actually happened, you know, what type of machine it was, um, what position it was in at the time when the incident happened and what sector and what, in, you know, industry it was on. So that kind of gives it doesn't say anything about, you know, our business on there, your business. So just please have some sort of confidence in, in the, um, you know, in, in this if you can. So. Um, so I've got a few little um, polls here, which I want you to to, um, to to go out and just let me get the first one up for you. Um, do you report your fatal incidents, lost time and near misses to the IPAF accident reporting portal? So if you can, um, you should be able now to select. Um, so it's quite clear as yes, no, sometimes, uh, or I didn't know anything about the reporting portal. And I can see now that you must be able to hear me, thankfully, because there are people that are, um, um, you know, interjecting on there. Give you a couple of seconds. Gives me a chance to have a little, a little think about what this, what this basically means to us as, a, as, a, as an industry. Okay. Okay. So about 60% of you didn't know anything about the portal, um, whereas 14% of you said yes, and 20% of you said no. So. I suspect my challenge here is really the 80% of you that either didn't know anything about it uh, or don't want to report. Um, now, I appreciate you might have your reasons and, and, and your rational as to why you don't do that, um, and that's fair play. That's your, you know, that's your, your interest. But hopefully, I've given you some insight as to why, you know, what we see as an accident working group, and you can, um, you know, you can you can do something about it. So, and yet, you know. We can do all these things. We can have all these great training programs. We can have all these great guidance, and yet we can't stop people doing what they're going to do. Now, these photos are taken from an industry website called Vertical.net, um, where a quick search can give you all sorts of incidents involved in the lifting industry. Now, you both wonder sometimes. You ponder over them, uh, and these particular ones are actually from their Death Wish series. 
um, clearly aptly named. Um, some are left for you uh, to decide on a Friday after a busy and hectic and stressful week if it's one for the Death Wish series and they vote. Others blatantly are just entered onto the infamous Hall of Fame. Um, and, you know, we look at that and you think, you know, at what point in time did they really disengage their brain and think, well, I'll tell you what, I'll get away with this. You know, you know, hopefully none of this happens in any of your sites. But stark reminder of, of what happens. And these are, you know, people, people, um, you know, taking photographs, I particularly like the one in the middle at the top, because um, I think that shows some ingenuity. Um, but I think the picture of uh, paints a thousand words. If you look at the guy's face, just realizing he's been photographed. Uh, hopefully somebody took some action on that. But with every photo, of someone's safe activity, sadly, we see the harsh and true reality of those who do not make it home to their family and their loved ones. Now, I'm clearly not going to be drawn into discussions on these sad events, as these investigations are still ongoing, but really wanted to highlight some very recent MUP incidents which have sadly resulted in fatalities. Um, again, these are snapshots taken from the, uh, the, the www.vertical.net website, which also reports on many different types of incidents within the rental sector. Um, and I would, it would be remiss of me not to inform you that this year alone so far in the month of January, as you can see on the right there, um, 2020, we've had three incidents which have been confirmed have, have resulted in three fatalities in the UK. So, sad, you know, irrespective of where they are in the world, extremely sad times for our industry. But we need to learn from these. We need to understand you know, why these are happening. So uh, now we've had a bit of a reality check. Um, just nearly need to have a look, get back to business in this global safety report. When we set to look out at the thousands of entries that were entered into the database, naturally we needed some some definitions as a working group. And there was only four of us on, uh, I think four or five of us on the working group. Um, and it would not be remiss of me, it would be remiss of me, sorry, not to thank all the businesses who have actually actively used that reporting portal. One thing became clear very quickly was that the free text element allowed in the current reporting portal did allow some strange definition, definitions and sub subjectiveness in the reporting. Um, some comments and, and, and parts of what was in there was quite bizarre to read sometimes. So naturally, we set out to define the types of incidents and create a series of common definitions to help us, which in turn hopefully will help you make things easier for when they're in, being inputted. The thought that being behind this was that if when we receive data and incidents, we can categorize these easier to look at ways in which we can potentially address later in guidance standards, uh, manufacturers can look at things. So an example of some incident outcomes here, you can see they're fairly straightforward, aren't they? Yeah, um, you know, with clear definitions. Um, and you will see, you know, from the new reporting portal later on, hopefully now it'll be much easier for the actual working group to define what actually happened, but ultimately make it easier for you as the user or your, you know, your people uh, inputting the, the incidents and the accidents. Um, just categorize a few, just give, so go through a few things. Fall from working platform. So persons have fallen from the work platform. The persons, so to be clear, the person was in the, work, the platform at the time. Um, they So they could have been ejected from the work platform as a result of mute moving, or perhaps um, they were traveling, or they were catapulted out the machine due to an impact or from it being snagged. Okay, so that's a clear one. Okay, fall from uh, fall from platform, uh, uh, fall from height, not platform. So person has fallen from the height, but was not actually in the platform. And there was quite a few of these, um, unfortunately, where people you know, didn't go home to their families. So persons have fallen from another structure, a roof or a tree, uh, when, when or you know, ex exiting the platform or re-entering the platform. Electrocution, fairly straightforward. Uh, entrapment, um, person's upper body, head trapped or crushed between the work platform and an external structure following movement of the mupe, you know, be it either travel or elevation. Um, but, the, you know, this occurred during operation of the mupe itself. Overturn um, is, a, is a quite an important one because, there's, you know, there's, uh, you know, clearly we do have mupes overturned, but permanent loss of stability of the mupe so that the mupe has overturned or partially overturned. Um, so as it says there, a mupe partially overturned will be rested on an external structure and not have all the ground points, wheel stabilizers or outriggers in contact with the ground. And then last but not least there, you know, an inoperable mute. So some type of technical issue, a mechanical issue. Um, and again, it obviously has been deemed that that mute will not be able to be used safely. Now there are other definitions which can be used and you'll see them in report today as I go through. You know, I'm not gonna go through too many of them, but you know, like crushing and trapping, pinching, things like fingers, climbing to the guard, you know, climbing to the platform and, 
you know, unfortunately, you know, degloving or, or having an incident there, fire explosion, um, being hit by, um, you know, a vehicle or a mupe, um, even, ob you know, unsafe or observation of the incident, um, that sort of thing. So see, seeing that sort of thing um, and then loading tip over of the mute, you know, something something actually happening, you know, where somebody's, um, you know, tipped the machine off, whether it's, um, you know, whether it's on their, um, you know, on, on their premises or not. So. OK, objectives quite clear. Let's learn from these reported in incidents. Let's analyze them further improve and promote the safe use of powered access within the sector worldwide. Remember the data in this report is from is from worldwide incidents from 2016 to 2018. And it's hoped now that the format has been approved and, uh, uh, and, and agreed by the group that you know, working with 2019 stats, these will be re released at some point in 2020. Um, there's also some historical work going on as well from for the data that was inputted from 2012 to 2015. But as I say, you know, when and how that's going to be uh, used or not, I don't, I don't know yet, but uh, hopefully that'll be released too. So um, when it first started out, the technical officer for IPATH I know him personally, but he painstakingly trolled the internet for news, info on, on incidents. Um, and, you know, try to take any duplication out of it, blah, 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 blah. Um, I'd like to think that now, you know, the IPATH has representation in many countries and continents, it's much easier, but that's not always the case. There's still a very big reluctance to report incidents for fear of litigation, especially in, in, in certain countries, as you'll see later in my presentation. So far, incidents reported from members in 24 countries. Um, the sharp-eyed amongst you, and you can count fast enough, will know, notice that there's not 24 yellow arrows on that page, but some countries are so close together, it was just deemed to be appropriate to, to, to put them as a single arrow. Clearly, IPATH will expect this to continue and expand and provide a wider overview of incidents across the access industry worldwide. Okay, so hopefully, uh, you know, we can, and I think if you think about when, what you'll see shortly, it's hope that carrying out this work, uh, the project can highlight the differences in, in recommend, uh, recommended localized uh, and country campaigns to tag unsafe activities in, for example, North America, Asia, Europe, you know, South America, etc. Okay, so we're just going to move on to another poll. Um, uh, just let me get me questions up here one second. Um, so, so which one of these uh, do you think has the highest number of incidents which have caused worldwide fatalities? So if you can just um, go in there for me. Two of them are quite, quite close together. Okay, so I think we, if you've all certainly that finished there, I'll close that poll. Okay, so 67% of you thought it was false from height, 14% electrocution, 12% entrapment, and 6% overturns. Okay, so good stuff. Um, and again, you know, there are other categories of, of, of fatalities, such as hit by vehicle, hit by falling object, mupe inoperable technical, you know, loading tip overs, ground conditions. So picking the top four. All right. And I won't spoil that thunder just now, but we'll go into it a little bit later on. So safety report itself will report on incidents uh, and, and fatalities um, worldwide, remember. So I mean, to make sure that we're, we're, we're clear of that, because when you see some of the things I'll show you shortly, you'll understand. So the report found that falls from the platform was the highest. OK. And if we take the actual figures, um, you'll see later on you'll see that electrocution um, was the second then entrapment and then overturns so they're the most common uh, four most common causes of fatality it also identified that a higher rate of reported incidents and fatals occurred in public areas and on roads or highways than we initially first thought forestry tree, forestry and tree care and construction are the industries with the largest number of fatalities where and also then with service maintenance and electrical activities also recorded high number of fatalities. Now it may be obvious, but incidents are more likely to occur, occur when the MUP is in the elevated position. Um, the delivery of MUPs, the maintenance of the machines also re resulted in high numbers of in, uh, injury incidents. Um, delivery of MUPs, maintenance, often forgotten about and accepted as a higher company's responsibility. You know, you, breakdown on a machine or machines being delivered. Remember, you've got responsibilities when they're on your site, and I'm sure most of you will be fully aware of that. But if you have any doubts about, you know, what about loading and loading, check out one of my previous webinars 
um, about you know load and loading best practice guidance. Um, also as well, it's, it's worth noting as well that IPATH will publish a detailed safety report for actual IPATH members. So us as a business, AFI group, we'll get our own detailed safety report of how how we how we have actually um, you know performed, uh, and this will provide members with you know you know clearly more sort of defined data. And hopefully we'll have that by the end of March. I know there's people on here that are li listening uh, from IPATH are probably smiling at that point. So um, over the three year period then, um, there were 1,557 reported en reports entered onto the IPATH accident reporting portal. Um, and you can see there, that's that's because obviously we've done three years data. Um, that's the three year data that you can see there. So um, as we said earlier, 60 people lost their lives from falls from the platform, 49 electrocution and so on. If you look down further down, um, you can see that the averages do come out a little bit more there because collisions are quite high in some respects, um, crushing trapping. And then you can see things like loading tip overs, hit by falling objects um, and mupin operable, which mechanical or technical. There was also 100 major injuries. Um, and all the, those of you that understand major injuries will know that, you know, again, they're life changing predominantly. There was 99 uh, minor injuries. There was 364 first aid uh, uh, occurrences and there was over 379 near misses. Now, also as well, which isn't reported on here, but there was also 417 damage to the machine or property. So that's, you know, that's damage, you know, things that you're probably not aware of, you know, smacked into something. Um, and often they're, they're highlighted when the machine returns to the depot. But if you take into example um, these things here, there was also environmental side of things as well. And, 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 and when analyzed, it identified there are some, some serious outcomes from certain types of mute situations. For example, if you take the four highest causes of fatal incidents there, um, it speaks relatively volumes. From looking at the chart, you can see that if you fall from a MUP, if you're electrocuted, or, or if you're working close to, if you're in an entrapment situation, or if you overturn a MUP, there's a high probability, and I'm sorry to point it out, that it's very likely you'll be killed um, in that MUP. Globally, there are certainly different figures from around the world, and my, in my insight into the rental numbers earlier worldwide will perhaps explain this. But you can see there that gives you know it's quite harrowing figures when you when you're looking at that. So if you look at um, you know for example you know major injuries, you can see the majority of the major injuries come from like overturns, um, hit by a vehicle or machine, you know loading tip over. Where you see some of the the majority of the minor injuries are you know you're crushing, trapping, and pinching you know you know guardrails and and you know dropping things on the fingers in in platforms and, and all sorts of things. Um, so you know clearly the blue has you know we all you know somehow we all like to see horrible things and you know you can see there but you can see that you know um, there's quite a quite a high proportion in in some areas. Here you can see the average of the industries with the highest report of fatals, um, with the top two being construction and uh, forestry, with service, M&E um, and electrical just behind. Now, if you add um, if you add um, rental and transport activities together, this gives you a different perspective um, to rental incidents. And I again, I again stress this was due to significant incidents worldwide, but also the level of reporting. Um, that was within the UK. So you can see on these charts, the annual average of reported fatal incidents by industry, and you can see forestry and construction annually, 19 people unfortunately lose their lives, um, as you can see there. Um, and you can see there that, um, uh, as you can see for the um, annual average of reported fatal and lost time incidents, that construction is, is slightly higher. Than, than forestry, um, and you can see that you know it pretty much follows suit in, in, in sense of it in terms of, of, of the incidents. All right, so quite quite good quite good information. We can clearly drill down into things. We can clearly you know look at certain things that we can we can improve there, um, and hopefully it can give you some insight there. The report also allowed us to drill down to locations where the reported fatal incidents happened. And though initially, and I believed, and I'm sorry, folks, um, that construction sites would have been the most likely place for a fatality to occur, I was wrong. Uh, sometimes my wife often says the same thing, I'm wrong, but there you can see. Um, here you can see the three-year aver three averages fatals and LTIs, including, including fatals. So surprisingly, roads and highways were the highest with 69 fatalities. Um, and you can see the averages there over the three year. Construction sites were 59, 
commercial premises and public areas were both were both 40 fatalities but if like i say earlier if you add the roads and highways and public if you add roads highways and public areas together this would account for 149 of fatalities so it's quite shocking uh, as you can see quite shocking stacks um the information you can see how shows our forestry um and and transport rental activity uh, now some of these fatalities and ltis would have been alongside a highway or road or perhaps in a public area and may have involved you know a collision with other vehicles so perhaps the mute set up without uh, or very little traffic management in place or perhaps a part of the mute was extended or swung out into the line of passing traffic so working alongside a road means that there's an increased risk of being hit by a truck a bus or you know other vehicle so we must not assume that drivers of other vehicles will avoid a collision with the mute with that mute with that cherry picker with that truck mount without putting in place some proper segregation protection and visual warnings you know protection for the public um, and using traffic management and pedestrian plans to prevent any incidents i would also really really high, uh, highly recommend looking at the ipaths um, street smart safety campaign on, on their website great information um, and great advice within that in terms of activities sadly it's no surprise to see that um, being in the elevated position is the most common reason for a fatality so it goes without saying that you're more likely to have a fatal incident when the machine is in the elevated position than when it's in the lowered position. There were, however, four occurrences of fatalities to ground persons. One sadly was hit by a falling object. Two were electrocuted after the mute made contact with an overhead line. And one was run over by the mute they were in fact guiding or banking. The highest um, actual machine category for fatalities was 1B type machines. So van type, spider type, track or truck mounted. Um, and they had 86 fatalities, um, followed by 3B or mobile boom type, which had 72 fatalities, and then 3A mobile vertical types or scissor lifts, which had uh, 47 fatalities. So you can see there, you can see the LTIs, you can see, for example, down the very bottom there, um, that the maintenance, there's more LTIs involved with maintenance, there's more LTIs involved with loading and loading. Um, and you know there's still some unknowns again that's the, that's the beauty of free text they get because you know the very little data or information was given to us okay all right so it gives you a bit of an insight there um, but certainly you know when in the elevated position you have you know obviously a lot more likely uh, than when you are traveling the machine to have a, a you know a, a fatal or an LTI total instance by country now this is something that came to light recently um, as I say um, not owing to the fact that around 75% of the incidents in the reporting project um, were reported by its members, um, you can probably perceive there that you know a lot of the, a lot of these incidents are reported by rental companies such as ourselves. And, and the next slide will show give you an insight into that. But then if we look at the countries, you can see where the biggest issues are. Uh, now again, industry sectors may be over or under. Uh, represented according to how IPAS global members are in each sector. So you can see there in terms of reported fatal incidents by country, you can see that United, United States, sorry, had 163 fatalities, Canada 10, Italy 9, uh, uh, down to the UK 3. So remember this was 2016 to 2018. Okay, so you can see your fatality, fatalities there. But then if we take the um, in, uh, total number of incidents that have been reported by uh, by category so everything the LTIs and, and, and everything you can see there for example the UK in itself and we're not knocking ourselves it started here hopefully it'll grow from here but you can see there that you know we as a country reported over a thousand incidents so near misses damage to property first aids etc um, and we had three fatalities you can see that the USA by context um, or by contrast, I say, reported 40, 41 of these, but had 163 fatalities and 15 major injuries. We had 50 major injuries as, as, as a country. Um, if you can see some like Canada, um, Canada themselves um, reported, you know, no incidents in terms of, you know, first aid, near miss damages, but had 10 fatalities, two majors and one, one minor. So you can see there, it, you know, quite, quite shocking stats um you know and it's things it's things that you know you know we have to you know, have to think about but i certainly think here um there's going to be some real great work by country representatives to, to to sort of push the message out there of you know for example in the states why are we losing so many people when they're in a powered access uh, unit etc yeah 
Okay, the report itself um, does give uh, does give some strong recommendations um, and falls on height. Clearly, you were right earlier when you all clicked on your link there that you know is the leading cause of fatal incidents when using a powered access uh, equipment. This highlights the need to follow safe systems of work when elevated, including remaining in the platform and also being attached with a harness and lanyard in a boom or a vehicle mounted mupe. When you're elevated, to always remain inside the platform with your feet firmly on the platform floor. Uh, do not climb or condone like we saw some of the pictures, you know, people climbing up on the guardrails. Get out of it, sort it out quickly, safely. Also, what was identified in the report was that personnel should only enter or exit the work platform at access, access positions at ground level or on the mute chassis and do not enter or exit at height. Sadly, a significant number of people were fatally killed while entering or re-entering the platform at height. Manufacturers are coming up with some, some great uh, solutions to climbing out of the platforms uh, or you know safer solutions. So I, I would encourage you to get all of the manufacturers and your rental companies to have a look at that. Um, in boom type mupes, uh, 1B and 3B, always wear a full body harness and can connect the lanyard to the designated anchorage point within the platform. We know that failure to wear the harness and the lanyard correctly has resulted in people being ejected from the pl platform and, and being fatal. Electrocutions, there are a significant number of electrocutions um, from either live working or working at height in close proximity to uh, high voltage power lines. The report emphasized that you can reduce the risk by isolating uh, or de-energizing power lines before elevating. At all times, keep a safe distance from the minimum approach distance. Uh, and when required, refer to the IPATH power lines guidance. Entrapment, mupes are often used in confined spaces or near to overhead structures. So there's a, where there is a risk of, of, of trapping or crushing to the operator. The powered access industry did respond by improving awareness, providing guidance on how to reduce the risk and the use of innovative protected devices called secondary guarding. If you're not sure what secondary guarding is, and I do know there's some new people on this webinar today that for the first time, please check again one of my previous webinars on secondary guarding. Also as well, in addition to you know awareness, guidance uh, and, and devices, uh, a PAL plus advanced training course was developed for high risk or challenging work environments. But I will say the take up on that additional one day course is somewhat low. So, you know, again, if you have got people that are working, um, you know, guys and girls that are working in close proximity to overhead, um, you know, structures and you've you've put them on the one day IPAF course or two day IPAF course, whichever, there is an additional PAL plus course, which can give you some, you know, you know, a lot more about attitude and, and, and safety working in and around them sort of areas. And also refer to the IPAF avoiding trapping crushing guidance. Remember, folks, secondary guarding can be used to reduce the risk of entrapment, but it's not the holy grail. Operators still need to be aware of their surroundings, of, you know, and where they are, etc. Overturns, um, the overturn of an elevated mute will most likely result in fatality of the platform occupant. It can occur due to excessive slope, ground, you know, inadequate ground conditions, incorrect deployment of stabilizers or outriggers. Or in some cases, just you know, extreme overloading and you know, people not having some concept of what their mute will actually carry in. Um, so recommendations wise, you know, mutes have undoubtedly made working height safer and reduced accidents. But clearly, they also come with their own hazards and risks when hired, used and put into action. What was evident within the findings of the report was that the lack of planning and management was a key contributor to the high number of fatalities and serious life changing incidents. So managers and supervisors must comprehend and understand the risks and good practices when using MUPs. Managers must ensure that MUP operators are superly trained, the correct MUP, the MUP is selected for the job, working at height is adequately planned and supervised. And it's essential that all personnel are familiar with the rescue provisions of the MUP, which is being used. Think about your process for MUP training, not only for operators, but critically for supervisors and managers, including understanding about rescue plans, etc. So my, my, probably my good punt here is the IMPAF MUP for Managers course. Great addition and, um, and one which I would highly recommend. OK, so um, in terms of reporting process, um, what I'll probably just go through is, I would imagine you as businesses, you've got enough issues going on um, and, you know, you, you, you push from pillar to post most days, I accept. Um, one thing that getting involved with this has shown me is that, you know, we can do so much better by, you know, reporting all incidents and, and accidents. And once you get 
you know, we've been doing it since 2012. We started, you know, at, at the onset to report our, our instance. You know, you can sign into the iPath poll or you can report anonymously with one click. There's quite a bit of work going on at the moment with iPath to, to, to change the portal um, and to also make it mobile and tablet friendly as well or more friendly. Um, but it's very simple process. And, you know, when the actual incident occurred, who was in charge and who was affected? What was the outcome? What was the category? You know, how was the machine being used? What were you doing at the time? You know, and, and clearly what happened. Now, the current um, portal does allow, like I mentioned earlier, some free text. And, you know, we had, you know, no disrespect to anybody, but we had some weird and wonderful sort of, you know, stories of what actually happened. Um, and sometimes drilling down into actually what happened can, can, you know, can confuse us because I know we had our own headaches sometimes going through it. But what's going to happen very, very shortly is um, you're going to see something like this. Um, so, you basically your, your iPath accident reporting portal, you can mobile it web, you know, you're going to have icons as such. Now, don't worry too much about them screenshots of, of the incident outcome because they're not the finished article, but, you know, the kind of placeholders that iPath were doing at the time. But, you know, instead of having to do, you know, loads of typing, you're just going to be ticking up, you know, you're just going to be clicking on a, on, on a you know, a, a box essentially. Um, and, and then we'll get a bit of an, a, a knowledge straight away. But then IPATH know about it and we can react to it and we can make, make some, you know, make something, you know, good out of what's actually perhaps, you know, one of the most saddest times that we can go through. There's going to be very sort of, you know, group managers can put, you know, admin users, uh, data admins, you can check everything before you send it off. So monthly it will sign off or do you want to change something? Actually, you know, it wasn't a minor injury. It's actually turned into a major injury. So you can update that. Um, and really and truthfully, you know, doing this is really helping the industry, you know, that we all, that we all work in. So again, coming shortly, I don't know if I had the IPAF people here now, they'd probably give me a bit of a, an insight into, into, in the timelines there. Right, so my last poll here really is sort of to ask the question, um, and you know it's one of um, you know earlier we had eight, you know, we had sixty percent of people that uh, that were logged on today and didn't know anything about the portal, and um, we had twenty percent that said no, they wouldn't report anything. So um, hopefully, I've changed some of your minds. All I can say is in doing something, um, we you know we are we are going to make a difference. We are going to make this industry safer. Um, so I've got now 6% of people who are logged on today already report accidents via the iPath portal. Um, I've got 74% that are going to say yes now. Thank you very much. Really, really pleased with that. And 75%. And I've got 20%. Uh, some of you are playing with me now who are saying that they're, they're unsure. Look, if I've got three quarters via, um, you know, on, on the on the park, I'm pleased. And, um, you know, ultimately, you know, I'm sure probably some of these will 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 we'll probably have to get director or boss approval or, you know, business approval. And I understand that and respect that. Showing you that little snippet the earlier shows we do not know anything about your businesses at all. Um, so we don't know who it is, where it happened. Yes, you're going to get insights into the into the media and stuff like that. But um, it gives you gives you a bit, uh, a bit, but gives me a little bit of heart to sort of say, look, you know, I maybe changed, you know, quite a few of you today because there's, there's quite a lot of people logged on to this webinar. So even before this report was, was started, IPAF were very proactive in addressing some of the issues. Um, and what you will have seen, perhaps those of you who have attended um, IPAF courses, what the courses, you know, that the courses and the guidance have changed to update and reflect the issues that happen in the industry. Manufacturers are doing a fantastic job. They've changed things. They've reacted. Um, you know, it, it's a, you know, as you all know, it's a big process in changing anything mechanical and, and guidance as such as well. But this also is also... Um, produced a number of what we call Andy Access posters. Some people call them iPath posters or what. Um, and these posters are freely available. They're a great resource for you. Um, you're able to download them and you're also able to personalize them with your own business. Um, but they're now accompanied also with, um, you know, with, with a toolbox talk. So, uh, so you can see like obviously attaching lanyards, plan for a safe rescue, you know, familiarization. Um, but as you can see now, they also come with their own, um, you know, toolbox talk. So a good five, five, 10 minute session, which you can go through the toolbox talk um, and, and, and away you go. And they are free to download, free to download. Okay, so um, I would say then, um, having been involved in this working group, that would never really have thought there'd been so many serious incidents. Um, but again, that was always going to be the risk, you know, that, you know, when we start 
asking for information and asking for data you know we're inundated with you know what happens and and once you start drilling down to it where your perceptions of where the incidents or the issues were yeah, probably about right in terms of false from height being um, the issue but you know if we look at electrocutions we know that a higher proportion of them are in the states um you know in the, in, the, in america um it's fair to say i've personally been quite proud to have been involved in the first ipath worldwide mute safety report um, I would say there's been a few headaches along the way, um, but I really do hope it makes people sit up and, and think and make a difference to the industry that we all work in. So I hope you found the information I've gone through today useful, worthwhile, uh, and thanks for listening. To cover, you know, obviously gone through the definitions and you'll see when, you know, you'll see when the report comes out and hopefully it's quite imminent. Um, you know, some of the information there, you'll see that I've pinched some of the slides from that. Um, but it is really worthwhile because it does drill down into quite a few of the issues that we need. So, um, so all that really leaves me to do now is to really thank you for, for signing in today um, and to listening to the web webinar. Um, if you have any thoughts for future webinars, uh, then please do let me know. Uh, I would appreciate it um, because, you know, sometimes, you know, what's the next subject? What's the next topic? Um, and if, I would appreciate if, uh, if perhaps if you could at the end provide some feedback. I'm just going to see if we've got any questions because I normally hide that tab because um, um, ultimately um, it can sometimes distract me when I'm when I'm on, on this because of their um, people saying sound. So. So which so I've got there, which. Um, countries of the highest percentage of incidents well early hopefully i've answered that now um if you take it in the incidents and, uh, and everything it would be the uk uh, because we report everything if we take the fatals um it would be the united states sadly um but so, you know again just so you're all aware this webinar is recorded um and what you will do is you will get the link to this recording in a couple of days time feel free to share it um and obviously you've got the screenshots and and, and what on whatever you've got on there I think you've been kind to me today, so no more questions. Um, so that all that leaves me now is to thank you for your time today um, and bid you farewell. Thank you very much. Cheers.